wonder who kind of got you involved in sports and playing basketball? As I have uh, three older sisters and an older brother, and uh, my when I was about five years old, my dad built my brother a basketball goal for uh, his birthday. But my brother wasn't really interested in sports, so I'd go out there and throw it between the legs and try to get it up there. And it took me a couple of years to finally do it, but. Uh, that, that was my start in basketball, simply because my dad bought my brother a, a, a goal. I have to admit something. I was a mascot, kind of, when I was little. Were you? I had a megaphone, <laughs> and I was out there with my three sisters. I don't know what I did, but I still have that megaphone, and it has Butch on it, because my godfather is Uncle Louie. His name is Louie, so they called me Butch whenever I, I was around him. So after I was the mascot uh, and my sisters graduated, my mom and I kept going to the games. And uh, people asked me who I idolized when I was young. And it was the high school players on the varsity that I was going to see. So that, that was my first interest. And always my goal was to play at one time on the varsity team. You and your mom were really close, weren't you? Yes. She was my big supporter. Uh, my, my dad had to, you know, he worked a lot. And I don't know if he had interest in sports. I know at one time he said basketball was a waste of time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, fortunately, I didn't listen to him on that point and continued playing. But yeah, my mom came to every game and She's the one who took me to practice and picked me up. Yeah, unfortunately, you, you lost her at age 16, I believe. Right, yeah. And that's when my dad started coming to games after my yeah. mom died. When did you start feeling like junior high or high school that you hey, I'm, I'm not bad at this game. I, I can shoot it pretty well. I can do some things. I was always successful and was on the starting team from the fifth grade on. It almost caught up with me my sophomore year. I was on the JV team and I was only 5'2". And I shot the ball like this. And I did that up until even through my freshman year. Really? And, and then, I don't know why, you know, I watched, then I'm watching Indiana players. And I don't know if that's what did it or I saw some other guys doing it, but then I started shooting it one-handed. I always wanted to go to Indiana, so I didn't answer, didn't fill out all the forms or whatever we did. Then I was thinking about Butler because I visited Indiana and Branch McCracken. I was with my godfather, my Uncle Louie. Walked in to the reception area and Branch McCracken walked out and he said, Louie, you look over the facility uh, while I talk to your uncle. So I went out and looked at it and came back and sat for about 20 minutes and uh, my uncle and Branch McCracken walked out and he looked at me and said, well, Louie, you have a scholarship here if you want it. And I thought, my uncle just talked him into it. He doesn't really want me here. So that's when I visited Kentucky. Okay. Best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. Usually Adolf would just take the recruiter's word for it. Right and say, okay, like Pat Riley, All-American. So they say, yeah, bring him in and let's try to sign him. Well, he had never heard of me. So he actually came up and watched the game that I played. And I think I had hit nine out of 11 shots or something in the first half and he left. And that, that's when he decided, yeah, I want this kid too. As long as I was playing basketball, I didn't have a problem with anything. Yeah. You know, it was just coming to another place and, 
and continued playing basketball. And then none of my brothers or sisters had been to college. And so I came in here scared to death, not knowing what to expect. And I actually studied a lot my first semester. <laughs> I hit the books and, and got a good grade point average. And from then on, I relaxed. It was different then in that when you came to campus, really nothing going on as far as structured basketball until that October 15th date. Right, we, uh, of course, we worked out with the uh, varsity guys. And in fact, John Adams um, got me one day and he said, Dampier, pass the ball. You know, he said, I came out of high school. I can shoot this whenever I want to because the coach told me I could in high school. And so that's when I realized uh, there's more to it than just shooting the ball. My freshman year, I played baseball. We did. And uh, then my sophomore year, I played varsity. I was a catcher all through my career. And when I got here, of course, Coach Lancaster was the baseball coach. So they put me in center field, and that was an experience. I had never played anything but catcher. So uh, they, they let me catch batting practice with my hand behind my back. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can see that. And, uh, you don't want to mess up that shooting. It, it, <laughs> well, they, they made me do it, and they let me catch batting practice. Uh, but anybody who is a catcher, that's the worst time to be a catcher. Exactly. <laughs> you have to sit back there for batting practice. <laughs> I, I was going to continue playing baseball, but my junior year, we went to the final game in the championship, so. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. You guys go on a roll, start the season, win your first 23 games? Yeah, we weren't, of course, coming off our 15-10 year, we weren't picked uh, very high in the conference or not in the nation, and uh, finally fought our way up to the number one spot in the country. Yeah, you beat Indiana at the uh, UKIT final that year. And that was 91-56. Put it to them pretty badly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, if I had the attitude that I have now, I would love to have gone over and said something to Branch McCracken. <laughs> <laughs> What's that song? How do you like me now? <laughs> you remember anything about going down to Knoxville and taking that first loss? Yeah, they they uh, threw a one three one at us. I don't think I think that was part of it. We just didn't handle their their pressure one three one. So then you go into the uh, tournament, play Dayton, at the Mid East Regional in Iowa City, and then beat Michigan in the finals eighty four seventy seven. I noticed that there was no day in between like there is nowadays either. You play and you play again the next day if you win. Yeah, we played. Uh, Friday and Saturday yeah. uh, in the regional and in the region and in the uh, final four. And you, that's one thing that I think happened to us was, uh, you know, like we played St. Louis that year and we had a scouting report that they played, as Coach Rupp called it, a karate defense. <laughs> so. You knew that they were going to be hacking away and you had to protect the ball. So we went into that game knowing what we had to do. But uh, we beat Duke on Friday night and then came back Saturday and played Texas Western, who we knew nothing about. Right. And their very aggressive defense, too, we would have been more prepared for it. I don't, don't know if that made a difference, but we did go into that game without knowing anything about them. I mean, you guys go on a 23-game win streak to start. You have one setback. Did you kind of think, hey, this is ours to take? We didn't say that, and Coach Rupp didn't say that, but uh, I'm sure we felt very confident. Was it a pretty confident it. team overall? Because I, I, yes, I know Riley's pretty confident on and yeah. off the court. And so did that carry over to the rest of you? or? Well, we also had Tommy Cron and Larry Conley. Right and they were the seniors on the team. And uh, they kind of were our leaders. But I, I think our confidence came from those two guys. The way we ran our plays, 
usually the, the guard that made the first pass was going to be the screener or cut through guy and then the second guard came off and uh, was the play was for, right. for that player. That's why you kept so, passing the ball back after they pass it into you, right? <laughs> but that's one that you ask about Tommy Cron and that's, that's one thing where he and Larry sacrificed their game a little bit because um, Tommy took it upon himself to, to try to start every play. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. To us, race was not involved at all. Uh, you mentioned that we beat Michigan in the final of the regional, and they started Cassie Russell and um, I think two or three other black players. So it wasn't like we had never played against uh, a team uh, with black players. And so we just looked at it as a the championship game that we wanted to beat that team because that's who we were playing. Uh, there was no race involved and even after the game, it, that has grown up through the years so much that even after the game you didn't hear anything about right. the white guys got beat by the black players. But yeah. through the years it's, it's, you know, it's just been built up as a, as a racial game. There, one of the players was sick, or it was under the weather. Who, who was that? Uh, the final game, Larry Connolly had the flu. Larry did, okay. And uh, he really sacrificed and shouldn't have played that game. Really? Because he was so weak, and and he had to be taken out and put back in the game because because of the way he was feeling. Was there any point during the course of the game where you guys or you individually? all of a sudden realize that, hey, these guys are better maybe than we thought, or? Well, there was one point in the game where Bobby Joe Hill stole the ball, ball from Tommy Cron. Right. And the next time up the floor, he took it from me. <laughs> so he got two steals in a row, right at midcourt too. It was embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, um, people say that was could have been the turning point of the game. But uh, it was in the first half, and and uh, you know talking with guys like Tommy Cron and Larry afterwards. Uh, well, of course Tommy's going to say it because he had a stone too. But I didn't think that that was what lost the game for us. How disappointed were you, both individually and as a team, after that loss? Because obviously you had to think we're going to win this championship. Uh, we were all crushed and you know it's the first time that I've ever seen I had ever seen Coach Rupp be upset uh, really sad about it uh, usually he'd come in and be his strong self and hollering at us for losing the game and get on us for different things but he was just just uh, meekly quiet as you look back now years later do you ever think, you know, maybe we should have done this, or is there one or two things you would have <clears throat> liked to have changed? Well, I, I wish we would have had a day off to go over a scouting report. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they tell us about how aggressive Big Daddy Latin was and uh, how strong of a player had to block him out. And I've always said, uh, with my eagle taking over, that we would have beaten them eight out of ten games. <laughs> if we could have, if we could have played them again, so. Had there been a three-point line in college basketball, I know you've been asked this a million times. How many more points do you think you would have had <laughs> running ten behind the three-point line? Even though we shot basically from that distance on some of our plays, but you take in there are going to be layups, free throws, sideline jump shots. You know, 10, 15, 17 feet out. So. I don't think I would have had that many more. Um, and we talked about quickly too, Coach Hall and his conditioning program when he came. We thought maybe it was your junior year. One day after we ran a half mile, he, Coach Hall was pretty upset with me because I, I did, I trotted. 
we were going into the weight room and he said, Damp here, you're nothing but a prima donna. And if I was a coach here at Kentucky, you wouldn't play for me. So of course, being a smart alley by then, I said, you're right. If you were the coach here at Kentucky, I wouldn't play for you. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, uh, Coach Hall and I have become, become buddies. And, and he even, I was up here running a 10K at UK. He, he had his team out there. They weren't running, but uh, I ran by and I hear this. Damn, Pierre, I can't believe you. Because here I am running a long distance now. <laughs> but, uh, what were some of your favorite memories of playing the ABA? I, I think the ABA was a fun league. Yeah. And not only to play in it, but I think the fans enjoyed it. And we had that crazy red, white, and blue ball. Yeah, how'd you and, like that? Okay, uh, once they got broken in, but the, the red, white, and blue ball was, was real slick when it was new. There was a lot of great talent in that league, though, wasn't there? Yeah, we had Julius Irving and George Gervin. Uh, Rick Barry came over and played a couple or three years, and Connie Hawkins and uh, Roger Brown, uh, two players who were blackballed by the NBA. You leave as the all-time leader in most points scored, most assists, most games, most three-pointers made, and minutes played. And all those names you just mentioned, that's got to make you feel pretty good, knowing you, you led that league. Well, all it, that. it does, but I also played all nine years. Um, I think uh, Dr. J would have, maybe in another year or two, and Issel would have caught me, but <laughs> they, they called it quits, so I, I get the I get the bit, take credit for doing all those things. And I'm surprised you didn't say most three-pointers shot, too. Well, I, I just put three-pointers. <laughs> <laughs> and great defense. <laughs> oh, yeah, defense. Um, from there, then, you go with San Antonio, right? Well, I was really glad that I got drafted by them because they were an ABA team, and I knew all the guys on the team. Right, so the, the acceptance wasn't a problem at all. Then. Yeah, that, I was really worried, like, if I went somewhere like Boston or New York, uh, who's this ABA guy coming in? Uh, I was really glad I got to go with the Spurs. Uh, and congratulations on the Hall of Fame induction this past summer. Thank you, I appreciate it. Boy, that was uh, something really exciting uh, to go up there and have my family and friends with me and um, just to be treated like royalty um, the, and be accepted by the players that are already in the uh, Hall of Fame. They accepted all the new members. You know, I was kind of worried about that because most of my career was ABA. So it it is uh, quite an honor. Now that it's over with, and I've been inducted. It's starting to soak in. And I'm appreciating it more. Uh, I so didn't look forward to going up there and having to give talks and be interviewed and have press conferences. Uh, <laughs> And I thought this is going to be miserable three or four days, but uh, ended up being a great time. Uh, of course, it's the greatest honor I've ever had in basketball. Um, as you look back now, um, how would you like for the Kentucky fans, fan base, or anyone to remember you? Maybe remember that I was a pretty good shooter and that we had a, had a pretty good team my junior year. Thank you.